Well, this week on Cars and Things Restos, we're getting to do a little bit more fab. We're going to change up the panard rod mount, probably get into the engine bay and start stripping some paint, I reckon. We'll see how we go. Guys, we're here at the uh, Holden Bar of War. Welcome back to Cars and Things Restos. Thanks for coming along and watching. If you haven't subscribed, please jump on and subscribe. Hit the bell and share it with your friends. Um, let I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so I, uh, what I've been playing with is I've been shortening up this panard rod uh, mount. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, what I have done is I've redrilled the hole back further, cut my uh, radius, and I've also cut this plate in there that's, which comes straight down. I'm going to re weld that. I've bent it up, if you can see, so that'll give us clearance from a panard rod. Bush, I've bent it up, so I'm going to weld along the top and along the bottom. That'll strengthen up these two pieces there. I'll weld uh, along here and along there. That'll strengthen all that up there. And then what I have done, I've just cut out a template, a little template here, and I'm going to cut out a bit of sheet metal, and I'm going to weld a piece of sheet metal in there on this side and also on the other side and that'll strengthen that up it'll probably be a lot stronger than what it actually even was to be honest with you with that in there so um, that will make it fairly strong shouldn't move and we should be tucked right back in away from the wheel so yeah we go all right got me plates welded in all welded in there nice here got the other side done just want to grind those welds back make it look nice and clean drill the hole right through and uh, I reckon that's going to be pretty tough, pretty strong, I reckon. We'll see how we go. Panard rod mount completed. All welded in there nicely. Braced her up. And that's what I'm going to get adjustable panard rod, but look at that. It doesn't get, it's not going to heat up there anyway. So I've got plenty of clearance. That right up there. So. That's pretty good. That should be a shitload stronger than what it was. Um, it's only precaution, really. It's not like we're going to go ballistic. Really, only going to bend it if we smash it into a gutter or something. But um, it should be tucked back far enough. Now it's inside everything, so we should have, I reckon, 40 mil clearance to the wheel at a rough estimate. Alright, onto the engine bay. Alrighty, just started stripping this back. I'm going to have to put a bit of rust blast on it before I do anything. Um, it's eating into it a little bit. Might try and grind it with the flapper disc. I'll rust blast it, then we might put some KBS on it um, to kill any rust. It's, it's uh, surface rust, it's not rusting right through or anything like that, but let's kill it all and then we'll put some epoxy on it. Um, just uh, round this away, I'm going to try and fill this with some filler or metal filler around here, try and smooth it off. Um, that's about it. Sort of all I've done today, that and the uh, panard rod plates. Oh well, we'll keep trucking along.
We've got uh, our patches welded in. I've got to grind them all back now and I've uh, welded all of the holes up in the everywhere. So I'm going to grind them all back flat and try and shape that nicely. Got that one welded in there. Uh, I'll flatten it all back and see what it comes up like once we've done that. It's not looking too bad if you look at that and then have a look at that over there. Once I flatten that back, it probably should look similar. We'll see how we go. Grounded it all back. Granted, it's going to need a little bit of filler just around the edge there, which is not bad because it, it dips in here because it went straight back. And if you look at the other side, it sort of goes up and flattens out. So, and so if I just put a bit of, I'll just put a bit of fiberglass filler or metal filler here. It won't need much, and I'll just taper it down, and it'll look like the other side. And around the edge there, and in the back, should be close to what the other side looks like. We'll see how we go, but I want to um, I want to rub all that back in there. Rub all this back. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to take it back to metal or not. It's um, I'll just chat to brother, see what he reckons. I reckon I could probably scuff it all back and probably then put some epoxy over it. And then I can start putting some filler over the over here once I epoxy it. And that's all filled in, be nice and flat. Uh, welded all our holes up everywhere. As I said, I'm going to leave that because I re reckon I'm going to de put a drain there. But now I'm debating what I do because I see you can get catch cans that go up in place of the fuse box. The bait whether I put one over there, tucked up out of there, and leave this. Um, now weld that hole up and leave this flat, and then put the uh, coolant bottle reservoir there. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. Anyway, which way I should go? Should I put a uh, breather box here and a uh, coolant reservoir box there, or should I put just the coolant buzzer and box there and the breather box up there where the the uh, fuse box goes. Let me what you guys think. I'll um got to think on that. Alrighty. Uh, but I think what it will be now is probably getting stuck into uh, rubbing all the all this back, epoxying it all. Oh that's right, I want to weld these holes up as well. Because uh, that, that hole there is um, where the wiring loom goes through for the wipers. Um, my, I'm thinking what I might do is um, weld all that up and bring the wiper um, wiring up from under here somewhere, run it along the inside. Um, but I'll see, see what, I, what I do there, so I might do that. But yeah, so next job is probably scuffing all this back, <coughs> or if brother wants me to take it back to metal, I'll um, I'll probably sandblast it all back to metal. Get it all looking nice and sweet, give it an epoxy, and then I can start putting some filler in places. Because uh, I want this front to be nice and no ripples or bumps, and nice, because when you open the bonnet, that's what you see, that, you see that, see that, and that, you don't see much of this down here. You can see it, but it's pretty hard. But when you look in there, you want it to look nice and fucking clean, so. Um, I didn't weld that up. Well, because uh, your, your original coolant overflow bottle goes there, and I won't be having that, so I'll need to weld that up too. That's all right. I'll get into it. All right, it's going along pretty good.
Just gave it a big tub with a um, this soapy water and a green Scotch Bright, which is I think they're 360, something like that. They're pretty coarse, so really wanted to get in and key it with that. And then I went over it with the rust blast. Uh, there she is there. So I'm just letting the rust bar blast eat into all that surface rust that's on there. Um, etch into it. It'll probably turn it dark brown to black and etch into it. And then I'll give it a good clean off. Uh, give it a scratch up with some, uh, probably some 240 or something like that. Go over it, give it a rub. And then I'm going to, oh, I've got to weld them holes up as I said. I've got to weld those holes up um, and then I'm going to epoxy it. So uh, I'll get it all in epoxy and then I can start uh, filling all the, the little crevices in that I've missed. There's a couple I need to knock out. Um, I'll get, I've made a new, um, a new slapper tool. We've, got, we've bought a slapper tool but it's a little bit light. So I've made one out of um, an old spring off a HQ and that is heavy. That is real heavy, so so that that's um, what I'm going to slap it down with and try and get it dead flat. Um, I did notice there's a little crease in the in the corner just there. I'm going to see if I can fix that, make it nice and smooth as we go around there. Uh, and I've got to try and get rid of this shit around here. So let's get some sandpaper on a roll and see if I can get rid of that. And um, yeah, see, I need to get in there and see, see all the runs in the uh, paint from the original paint. I've got to rub all that out, otherwise it'll come through in the paint when I go to paint it. So, and I don't want that. So, uh, there we are. Still debating whether I'm going to keep air conditioning in it. Don't know yet. Um, not sure. Uh, when I was at Summonats, not many, well, people might have had air conditioning on, but they're all driving around with the windows down, so... Uh, it wasn't that hot though this year, I've got to say. Um, anyway, I'll keep trucking along. That might do it for this episode. Um, we'll see how I go, um, whether I get any more done tomorrow. So, uh, okay, if you haven't subscribed, please jump on and subscribe. Hit the bell, share it with your friends. We appreciate you coming along and watching. Uh, appreciate the comments we're getting. Thank you very much. Um, on everybody's comments because they've all been positive. Um, and uh, all right, that'll do. We'll see you next time. Cheers. He <laughs> just got back from his driving test, and what are you doing, mate? Changing them to pee. <laughs> you are a legend. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> ah, <fuck>. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Good job, buddy. That means I don't have to go and get uh, Kentucky anymore. I can sit at home and relax on the iPad watching Cars and Things Restos on YouTube while Noah goes up there and gets us something to eat, darling. Well done, buddy. Well, guys, just doing that work stuff again. You're getting in the way of me building cars, but check this shit out. Just jumped out of the tractor to have a squirt. Now I can't find my tractor. I can hear it. Jesus Christ. There is a bravery somewhere. There it is. There <laughs> she is. <laughs> oh, keep going. Look at the size of this crap, would you? Oh, good. Good day's work. Right, guys, here I am, battling away through this fucking jungle. Trying not to knock a sprinkler over. Look at the size of it. So viewers are probably wondering what it is. Okay, what it is is it's uh, a plant product called sorghum. Uh, they use it for uh, stock feed and stuff like that. Um, whoa, shit! And this is the drama I have going through this patch. And oh, not the, not the, oh, not the sprinkler. Just back it up a bit here. Going through this patch, trying not to knock bloody the sprinklers over because it grows so tall. We planted this just before Christmas, and um, uh, you see how well it's grown. 
what are we what are we just into February now? So uh, what we do with it is um, we roll it down as I'm doing now and uh, turn it into mulch and um, it covers the ground. We plant through it. We plant our peas through it and uh, it eventually breaks down and goes into the soil and uh, uh, it feeds all our microbiology in the soil which uh, helps our whoa where the hell is this one there it is uh, helps our uh, peas grow so virtually we're putting carbon back into the soil instead of taking it out well we take it out as well through the plants as we grow it but we've you've got to put it back in um, so it also uh, helps with uh, watering costs and stuff like that because it's the, the the soil stays damp underneath it and uh, helps helps with that uh, also weed control so that's what uh, this stuff does for us well i just uh, let you guys uh, know that I do have a real job this is what it is I'm a farmer so I'm a good brother no, I am a qualified automotive technician but um, now, nowadays I'm out on the farm with brother and uh, we do this sort of stuff so when I'm not playing in the shed with cars I'm out doing this uh, and I enjoy it, it's great um, we do quite well enough so we can build cars and show you guys alright there you go, there's a little snapshot of my day job see you in a bit